Good morning. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. It's good to see you and it's good to be seen by you. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has made. We are so thankful for the opportunity he's granted to us to gather together in his name. So briefly before we uh, get into our study, we are in Acts chapter 10 today. And before that, uh, we want to do a baby dedication. Normally we don't do it now or we don't do it this day but we want to do it for these friends of ours. They don't live here. They live in Litane, and they are our people here, and they were in town. They requested if we can uh, dedicate their child. I would welcome all the other pastors if you're here. Please, Karibu, and the family of um, Wycliffe and Deborah, Please, you're welcome. All the other pastors are fired. They are not here. Amen. Encourage them as they come. So the family of Wycliffe and Deborah, if you're here, please join us. Um, and the Lord bless you. The uncle, the auntie, the mother, the father, the grand. So next time you dedicate your the next child, okay? Bring your whole clan. <laughs> that is the scheme. Bring your people. Bring everyone. Skuje moja moja. Well, this child is wondering what is happening right here, but it's fine. Pretty girl. Wycliffe, some of you know Wycliffe, some of you don't, and Deborah, and their parents here, Dr. Jakait. Um, they are very good family friends of ours, every one of us, you know, we, by default we go to Sida <laughs> for whatever reason and we are, we are grateful for the relationship, we are grateful for the wonderful time we've had together since the Lord brought all of us together and we thank God for this blessing, this child, very calm, very calm, Janice, very calm. So I want us church to pray for this family. It is our custom here at church. We bring the children. We do not baptize children. We dedicate them to the Lord. We enter into an agreement with the church and the parents to bring up the children in the way of the Lord. When they are of age, they will not depart from it. You can be sure of that. It is God's word. So please join us together with, the, together with this family. Raise your hands towards this child and this family as we pray for them. God Almighty, we thank you. We bless your name for you are a good God. Your, your word remains to be true. You said you will bless us, and we have already seen your blessings. We thank you for Wycliffe, we thank you for Deborah, that you have blessed them with a child, that the, the fruit of our womb is before us, Lord. This child is a blessing, 
not only to them, but the rest of the family, and even a blessing to the world. We do not know what your plan is with this child, but we want to bring this beautiful girl before you, born into a world of uncertainties, a world that has wicked, wicked things happening right now, but Lord, through your hand, we know you're able to protect her, Lord. I pray that all the vices of the enemy will not come upon this child, that she'll be protected of you. And we pray that you give the parents wisdom, knowledge, and understanding on how to raise this child in your ways, oh God. We thank you, God. As a church, we enter into this relationship and the covenant to also train them when they are brought to us, Lord. Give us wisdom and give us discernment on how to do it your way. We thank you and we bless your name in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If there's a party, please call us. <laughs> Turn with me to Acts. Chapter 10. And before we read God's word, let us ask for his blessings. God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity you've given to us to go through your word. We ask through your spirit that you give us understanding, that you will speak to our hearts, and above all, that you will be glorified in our lives as we seek to apply your word in our lives. All this we ask in your name, amen. From verses 1, the Bible says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour, of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming, coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him had departed, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier from amongst those who waited on him continually. So when he had explained all these things to them, he sent them to Joppa. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they met ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven open, an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and led down to the earth. And it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild bees, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill 
and eat. But Peter said, No, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Now while Peter wondered within himself what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the man who had been sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they called and asked, whether Simon, whose surname was Peter, was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise therefore and go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. When Peter, then Peter went down, to the man who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he who you seek. For what reason have you come? They said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one who fears God and has a good reputation among all the nation of the Jews was divinely instructed by, the whole, by a holy angel to summon you to his house and to hear words from you. Then he invited them in and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them, and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. This is pretty much interesting to see what is unfolding here. We are told that there is a man, or there was a man. His name is Cornelius. Perhaps, I know we have interacted with Cornelius before. We know um, of how... People have talked about, you know, his goodness, whatever he's done to people, helping people, a just man that he was. But you see, this man was not amongst the so-called God's people, the Jewish people. He was a Gentile. And also, he was a centurion. You remember in Matthew chapter 8, let me try to find it here. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a certain a centurion come, came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Jesus is giving the assurance that for sure everything is going to be all right. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Don't we like that verse? Lord, just speak a word and thy servant will be well. Verses 9, 4. I also am a man under authority. Now see how he's wording it. I am a man under authority. He's not saying, I'm a man in authority so I know what happens with authority. He says, I am a man under authority. For men and women who are under authority 
It is easier to be trusted with authority. You cannot be in authority if you're not under authority. You want to be a loner. You want to do things of your own accord. You will mess things up. And this centurion is saying, I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes. And to another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have found, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel, not even in the people who are called by God's name. Never found such a faith. See, you, you don't need to come under my roof. You, you, you're already there, even when you're here. This is a man who acknowledged authority, and not just authority, the authority and the deity of Christ. That even while he's here, he can still walk in China. He can still walk in, you, you know, your, your, your village mates, wherever they are, and you're, you're sending prayers there, you're asking God to deliver people. He walks even when we don't see it. You don't need to come under my roof. And this centurion that we are reading here in Acts, technically they had about a hundred people that they were in charge of. And they had bodyguards. He's actually sending one of the people who was his bodyguard with other two servants to go to Peter and to instruct him, to summon him to come. This was not a suggestion. It was a command. But we are told that this man was a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to people and prayed to God always. What a qualification. What a wonderful thing to know from a man. First of all, he's a devout man. He's a man who fears God. Not just himself, but his household, which means he's a man who led his family well. Because some people have authority out there, but their houses are crumbling. People think they're great out there, but back at home, things are not well. And he also gave alms generously to people, regardless whether they're Gentiles or the Jewish people. He gave alms to everybody. And the other interesting thing is that he prayed to God always. And church, you know, we, we have repeated this time after time, every other week. You know, pray always, read your Bible, and we think this is a Sunday school drill. It is not. Every believer who doesn't pray is going to be very powerless. The enemy can swift you. You don't read the Bible, what are you going to know of God? You know, Jesus told us that he will bring the Holy Spirit with us. He will not leave us as orphans. And when he comes, he will remind us of all the truth and he will teach us all the truth. How can you be reminded of something that you don't know? You haven't read it. There's, you have no idea. You know, this is how the world is deceived because people don't pay attention to God's word. People don't read God's word. And yet it's something that we remind ourselves every week. Please read God's word. Read God's word. 
This was a man who followed all these things. And also we see that this is probably the first family and household of the Gentiles that we are seeing being assimilated in the Christian family. Paul, when God called him, we just saw a few weeks ago, the conversion of Saul of Tarsus, God told him that he, he will bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. Mostly, he's going to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And as it is right now, the apostle Peter, in his mind, is like every other person. I'm born again, and I'm still a Jew. Everything that is not of the Jewish tradition, I don't accept it. We don't follow it. And God is using this illustration to cause him to think, to cause him to open up his mind. You don't limit yourself just to, you know, preaching to the Jewish people and a few people around here. You don't want to speak to the Gentiles because they are uncircumcised and all these things. No, 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 no. Jesus died for everyone. Whosoever believes. You, we cannot get a whosoever if there's not a people who are going to tell them about whosoever. There has to be a messenger who is going to go down there. This man, we are told of very good qualities here. See, we are told that he was a great man and a good man. These two characters they barely meet one another most of the time. Great and good. Because we have a lot of great people out there, but never good. This combination is wonderful. And take note of this. Goodness makes greatness truly valuable. Goodness makes greatness truly valuable. And greatness makes goodness much more serviceable. And, good, and greatness makes goodness much more serviceable. He was an officer of the army. There were people around him. And we can borrow from the, the former centurion who said, I'm a man under authority. If I say this, it happens. Maybe it's the same case. But different to that, this man also, he feared God. He gave alms to people and he prayed continually. You know, some of us, we, 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 we think when we come to church on Sunday and we pray and we worship, that will suffice for the whole week. <laughs> we don't need to do any more prayers, no more reading, no more fellowship. The Sunday, it's a Sunday best. Make sure you give your all on Sunday. Then on Monday, you're fine, fine. <laughs> that is not how it works. Did you guys have breakfast before you come to church? Many of us, I believe. And many of you have already menued food for lunch, right? For many of you, you know what you're going to eat for dinner. Especially for women, you have the plan. From yesterday, you know. This whole week, you're thinking, your brain is just working things out. Why? What are we going to eat? What are... Men, we don't think about those things. When we eat, we eat. <laughs> Whatever we find, we thank God and we move on. We are not wired to think that way. And it's a blessing. You think of it, if the men and women want to fight on what they're going to cook. <laughs> it's rice, no, it's ugali, no, it's... Ah. It will be a whole lot of chaos. But we have plans for food already. We have plans for food, for sure, for the whole day. 
what plans do we have in regards to our relationship with the Lord? <laughs> what is the plan that we have? Because we think, and honey, the Holy Spirit will just remind us. No, the Holy Spirit works with order too. He helps us to plan things ahead of time. This time I will have fellowship in my house. I will go visit people. I will go help. I will do all these things. And you plan all those things. It's a blessing and God will bless you when you do that. But we think when we pray in the morning, let's meet in the evening again. Maybe. Or if we happen to pray during the day, it's like, Lord bless this food like yesterday. Thank you. It is very casual. It is very casual. And you see what we read here? The Bible says that your prayers and your arms. Wow. I'm just thinking, can, can this be said of me today? Can God send someone to tell me that your prayers and your arms have, be, have, have come to my throne? I know about it. Your tears have gathered them somewhere. I know about it. This man was praying about three o'clock. And you know, this is probably one of the busiest times of the day also. Just after lunch when people are coming back to your office and you're busy and you're busy and you're busy. Just think with me. This was a busy man. A man in charge of a lot of things. How is it possible that he prayed every time? Where did he get the time? Where did he get the time? Because for most of us, like, we don't have time. We'll, we'll try to create time. This is how we encourage ourselves. We'll try to create time, right? We'll create time. We'll create time for prayer. We we'll never create time for lunch. It is just set already. <laughs> Default. If the believers prayed as we ought to, maybe that neighbor of yours who is not born again would be a Christian. Maybe those colleagues of yours would be believers right now. Maybe there's something new that would have happened in your village, in your neighborhood, whatever it is, if we prayed more. God is taking an account even when you don't know. And when he observed him, actually, you know, another good thing here is he was called by his own name. <laughs> Meaning, you, whatever you're doing, whatever your arms you're giving and helping people, the Lord know you by name. Even if you went as a group, the Lord knows you as an individual. He knows you. And when he comes, he will not confuse your name. Cornelius. That is who you are. Jane, that is who you are. That is who you are. And when he observed him, this Cornelius, saw the messenger, he was afraid. He was thinking, man, have I been doing something wrong? A lot of things are going through his mind and he's wondering, why, why is the God of the universe sending a messenger to me? Why is this important. And it was a good reminder. He was afraid. And he said, what is it, Lord? This is not the other what is it. When people are coming to bother, they're like, hey, what is it now? <laughs> it is not that one. It is the other one. What is it, Lord? I don't know what this message means right now. And he was told that your prayers and your arms 
have come up as a memorial before God. You know, I was reading this and thinking about it, and all I want to do is I want to serve more. All I want to do is I want to pray more. All I want to do is I want to help more as much as I'm able. The Lord has given us the ability to do so, to help more, to pray more, to be kind the more, to serve the more. All these things we have the ability to do. As a memorial before the Lord. And now, he did send the people to go bring Peter. And as they are on their way, Peter went to the upper room at noon to go and pray also. Now look at him also. He's a man of prayer too because he's know, he knows that he cannot accomplish anything, anything without prayers. Where did he learn this? From our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ submitted himself, the Bible says, to the will of the Father. He prayed every time. He would separate himself from the crowd, from the people, from the busy of the day, go to the mountains and pray. And Peter knew this for sure. God has used me before. Many things have happened before. But for greater things to happen, I got to pray. I got to pray. Men ought always to pray and not to cease. Pray always. Pray always. It's a wonderful thing to pray. It's a wonderful thing to speak to God and also to let him speak to you. And then when he was in the upper room praying, the Bible tells us here, I, I think this is very divine. He became very angry. <laughs> very hungry. Things are boiling in the stomach. And then there are animals that are going to be dropped and he's going to advise on the Lord what to do. He's going to tell him what to do. He was very angry, and he was waiting. And upon his waiting, he fell into a trance, and he saw heaven open, an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. And it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, No, Lord. Let's just pause right there for a moment. How many people say no to the Lord every time in the Bible that you read? If, if, if it's not this notorious guy. Jesus talks to the disciples how he's going to die and he says, no, no, that can't happen. People come by night and they arrest Jesus. They want to take him in. He takes a knife and takes someone's ears They're like, no, this will not happen. And Jesus tells him, you know, you're going to deny me three times. They say, absolutely no. No, Lord, no. It happened three times. He looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and he was a broken man. Like, did I say, this, this, this must be hard to think about. And then after, he gets discouraged and takes people to fishing because the Lord is gone. Jesus appears to him and says, hey, do you love me? Say, yes, Lord. Say it again, do you love me? Of course you know I do. The third time, Peter, do you love me? Of course, Lord, you know that I love you. <laughs> Things have to work in three pairs for him. Three. <laughs> Every time, three and three and three. Right now, it is three. The Bible says, 
This was done three times. And the object was taken back to heaven. He's, he's trying to advise Jesus on what to do. He said, no. <laughs> no, Lord. This is like the answer my, my little girl gives me every time. Even before knowing what I'm going to say, where am I? No, daddy. <laughs> it's kind of like what my wife does also. Too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's default. By default, it's no. And then you think about the yes later. It's no, 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 no. It's no, 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 no. It's no. There are just people who are wired that way. It's no. I don't know if Peter was wired that way. It's just No. We ain't going to do that right now. Rise. Kill and eat. It's like he wants to re remind God of what he wrote in Deuteronomy 14. Didn't you, God, say that we should not eat these specific animals? Was that your word? Is it true? So what about this one? But little did he know that this, he was not just talking about food and animals. He was prepping his mind to think about the Gentiles. Because he does not like them. <laughs> he doesn't want to go and preach to the Gentiles. And already a Gentile family, they are, they are God-fearing. But then... He's going to be sent to go and preach Jesus to them so that they believe correctly, so that they don't just do things as a tradition, just following tradition. You, you remember that young man whom Jesus was speaking to, and he said, Lord, I have kept all the commandments from my youth. All of them, no problem. Just say another one. I'll follow it. Jesus said, oh, I have one. Go sell your property and give it to the poor. That was the departure. <laughs> he knew what was really in his heart. It is, I can't let go of my money. I can't let go of my shamba. I can't let go of this. These things are so dear to us, friends, even when we don't voice them out. If the things you have were taken off you, would you still say, God, you're worthy? <laughs> you're worthy to be praised if they were taken because many of us, our, our vision and mission is to be billionaires, right? <laughs> Get them quickly and bring them to church if you're faithful. <laughs> the Lord was prepping Peter for this. And I just want us to end from there. And we'll pick it up next week. See how this mission would be accomplished later. That he was sent by God to go and speak. We see here that Cornelius prays and gives arms in the fear of God. So friends, if we ought to give arms, there has to be prayers that will accompany it. You don't just... You know, this is what the world does. They'll give arms, don't they? They give it everywhere. They give it everywhere. In fact, Jesus said, the poor you will always have. <laughs> you, people think when they help the poor, now they are in the good books with God. No, no, no. Where is your devotion to God? Where is your allegiance? If, if you... A devoted man or woman, and you pray and you're giving out, you know it's not a waste. Those who do not have anything to do with God and they give alms, they have already received their reward. God was preparing this man. He's seeing food and saying, no, we cannot do this. We cannot do this. God says, 
what God has cleansed, you must not call it common. The people I have called, the people I have chosen, the people I have saved, don't call them unclean. They are my people. Jesus died for everybody. Apparently not everybody will see heaven because we have to make a choice to follow him. We ought to embrace this, that as we are helping people, are we devoted? We see in these two people, Peter and uh, Cornelius, it was unusual for, well, Peter kind of knows things. He knows he could not miss that that was God, but he was wondering what this means. He was not in doubt of who is speaking to him. He was just wondering what this means. What does it mean? Whatever God has cleansed, you must not call common or unclean. What does it really mean? The things that God has spoken to you, do you know what they mean? Or have you asked him what they mean? You know, some people would just read the Bible and say, well, I didn't understand it, so I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to read it again. But you know, the interest of God is not for him to leave people confused. As he reveals things to you, do you have the desire to know? Do you have the desire to grow? Do you have the desire to ask God, that, Lord, you spoke to me about this issue, about these things. My brain doesn't get it. Help me. I can't grasp the truth of it. Help me. As I bring the worship team to come, you know, do you often ask the Lord to help you? Help you know what he's up to, what the Lord is doing. The Lord has granted us opportunities. Do we want to waste them and say, well, this, this, I, I cannot go and minister to this kind of people. These are Gentiles. These are Doreris. These are whatever names we give people. Every tribe, every tribe in Kenya, we have a name for the, for the next tribe, right? This, this one tribe says this one tribe cannot be born again. Because they love money. Or because they love this. They love this. They love it. We have profiled people. You think that is how God works with his own children? You know, those that, are, those that would be taught the things of God must... On these things, meditate. It's revealed something on you. Think about it. God, what is it with this? You're calling me into this. You're calling me into this ministry. You're calling me into this job. You're calling me into this career. I, I don't know how it's going to go. I don't, know, I don't know what it takes. I, I just don't know. I need your guidance. I need you to lead me. And when he's thinking about this, he's kind of confused about it. Remember, the Lord has already sent people to come and pick him up. And when they, are, they just arrive at the gate, the Lord is speaking to him again and say, Hey, there are people, three people down there looking for you. I mean, God does not confuse things. He's not the author of confusion. He makes things just work and work and work.
But the question is, have we given ourselves totally to the will of the Father? That when He speaks to us, we can hear. Remember the, two, the three gentlemen who came, they are Gentiles, and one of these guys is a soldier, dressed like a soldier, is a Gentile. If there was no preparation in Peter's mind, he was not going anywhere, trust me. <laughs> he was not going. He could have gone to the upper room and stayed there. <laughs> but you just think about it. You know, people think, oh, wait, now you're, you're born again, then you cannot get confused about things. You cannot be. No, we get confused about things every day. We, we don't know things every day. We've got to ask God to help us. And it's very easy for us to say, well, we, we pray for the people in the world there to get born again, to get born again. No, this message is for us who, is in, who are in church to rethink our traditions, the things we are holding. Like Peter is saying, God, I've never touched any unclean thing. <laughs> that is what we tell ourselves. I've never done this. I've never lied. I've never done this. I've never done this. If the Lord would give you a checklist, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be surprised. But before you're surprised, because it's all knowing, surprise yourself by knowing those things and bring them before the Lord. Bring them before the Lord in prayer. You know who the Lord is interested in right now? Is you and I. Are we going to hold on to these traditions? Dietary laws? Follow them to the latter and ignore what the Holy Spirit speaks to us? Listen, what I've noticed over the years that I don't have to understand everything every time. The question is, am I obedient to the will of the Father when He calls, when He is guiding me, when He is leading me to some places? It's, it's on us. Cornelius, we are told that he was a devout man. A man of good reputation. He prayed every day. These kind of things, we've gone through them. Even when the apostles were told the disciples to bring the seven deacons. Men of good reputation. Men who are filled with the Holy Spirit and have wisdom. This is not just for the sake of leadership. It is for every believer. To fear God. The fear of God is the beginning of what? Wisdom. And also, the fear of God is acknowledging His presence daily. Because if you cannot acknowledge His presence, you'll make an assumption that He's not there, right there. Acknowledge, if you acknowledge God, there are things you will not do. There are sites you will not visit in the internet. There are conversations you will not have with people. There are talks you will not have. Why? Because you're acknowledging the presence of God with you. He's here with us. But one thing I love about Cornelius is when he was giving alms and praying and doing all the good things he did, he wasn't parading things. Hey, have I helped you enough? Oh, you people are Jewish people. I will not give anything to you. 
I'm a lure. I'm, I'm just going to help the lures. You're a Kalenjin, get out of here. A child of God does not think that way. If you're thinking that way, you're, that is why we're reading this, so that you restructure the way you think. We are all bought at a price with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This blood is not heavy on other people and less on other people. as we bow our heads in prayer. Maybe, just maybe, you're here and things, things are not right in your heart. You've got traditions and things you're holding on to that are not Christ-like. I pray that at your quiet time you think about it and you bring it before the Lord in prayer. Sometimes we, we just think, you know, they're just good things. They're not harming anyone. But maybe there's something. Maybe there's a struggle. Maybe there's just things are not working out. I want you to bring it before the Lord in prayer. He knows it way ahead of time. He prepared all of us to come today so that we can hear him speak to us. And the Lord does not make assumptions. He's all-knowing. If there's something he's pointing out for you to do, Go ahead and do it. Don't say no, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for the fellowship we've had. Thank you that you remain to be a good God. Thank you for your word and how I pray that you will meet us at the point of our need for we are all needy and we need you. Lord, help us. Whatever case, those who want to rededicate their lives to you those who are saying, Lord, I've tried with my own strength. I'm not able to. I pray, God, that you meet each one of us at the point of need. You know our heart and nothing is hidden. Nothing is hidden. So we thank you. And as we give our finances to you this morning, we pray that you will be blessed by them. I pray that we will give that which brings glory to you, knowing that everything we have is a blessing from you. And with whatever we are going to give, the hearts are being thankful for what you have blessed us with. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.